What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Young Guns Podcast. The Munchak Canadians are tanking. They're tanking for Connor Bedard, most likely. But that means they're going to have to make some decisions. There's going to be trades that are going to have to be made. And probably some players are going to have to be sent down for their own sake in terms of development. And the player we're going to be talking about today is Slavkowski. Slavkowski drafted first overall in the first round in the 2022 draft. Unfortunately, is playing four line minutes, not playing any special units. And obviously, I think at this point that, you know, it's time to send him down to Laval. Probably, you know, for a playoff push and try to go for a playoff run and boost up his confidence. He's only 18 years old, 6'3". He has 10 points in 33 games, 4 goals and 6 assists, negative 6 and plus and minus. You know, he needs to properly develop. If you want this kid to be a star in Montreal, he needs to be in a winning environment. We said that last year with Cole Caulfield when he got sent down to Laval to regain his confidence and he came back after St. Louis was hired as the coach and Ducharme was fired and it worked out. But in terms of this case, Slavkowski needs more conditioning. So, Luca, what are your thoughts on Slavkowski? Does he need to be sent down? What do we do with Slavkowski? Well, I think I think first and foremost, I want to say that the Montreal Canadiens uh, have done a terrible job in the development of Uri Slavkowski and I don't want to... Uh, take anything away from Kent Hughes and Marty St. Louis. You know, I think for the most part, they made some good decisions, but I just think for this one, they're not getting it right so far. Um, I could be wrong, and I hope it comes back to bite me in the ass, but honestly speaking, I think for a guy that you drafted first overall, there's a few mistakes that they're making. One, they're putting him on the fourth line, and they haven't really given him power play unit, and I understand that at the beginning of the season, they were just trying to see get him used to North American ice, and I understand all of that, but... You know, this is a guy that you drafted first overall. You have a ton of expectations for him. You know, you expect him to play on the top units. And you expect him to play there for a lot, you know, a lot of the time, too. This is a guy that's your future. He's going to be the guy that's going to be part of your franchise for years to come. So, you know, I, I want to see him play at top minutes, play with the top players, and, and have him, you know, get the chance and the opportunity to play with those guys. And I know people are going to say he has to earn those minutes. You're right. But at the same time... It's hard to earn those minutes when you're playing with third and fourth line guys that aren't playing up to expectations either, right? I'll give you an example. Jonathan Drouet. He was playing with Jonathan Drouet for t- for parts of the season uh, while he was injured, and then when he came back from injury, Drouet has zero goals this season, right? He's played with Joel Amia, Michael Pazetta, Jake Evans. All those guys combined have three goals this season. So it's not to be disrespectful to everybody on the team. It's to look at the facts and look at where it's where it's at. Uri Slavkovsky hasn't been given an opportunity. And when he has, he's played well in that role. And so I think that people need to understand that I think that if Montreal um, made this decision to keep Slavkovsky in the NHL instead of sending him to the World Juniors, which is what they did, they should have given him an opportunity to play on the top unit. They did it. I think he would have helped Slovakia in the World Junior in the World Juniors. I think he would have been a big player for them as well. I think he would have developed even better by playing at the World Juniors. And I also think that he does need time in Laval. I think this is a Laval team that, first of all, has has had a lot of injuries, number one. Uh, But number two, I know that they're struggling this season and they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but having him play on the top line with a guy like Jesse Yelonen and even a guy like Red Pitlick to some extent on the top line in the AHL could actually be beneficial for him because he would be able to put up points. He'd be on the first power play unit as well, and it would allow him to grow on American, North American ice as well. So I do think that Laval is the best bet for him right now, especially with the fact that the Canadians are not only losing games but getting blown out. Um, and so I don't think it's good for his development either. And so I think that in that case, and because of the fact that the Canadians are where they are, I think that it's just the best decision right now to just send him, to send him to Laval, let him play meaningful games, let him play on the top line, gain some power play experience as well, and then next year when the season becomes, you know, a, a, another season and a new season, and potentially you know with some new draft picks and new players coming in with with guys getting traded this uh, at the end of the season and stuff and getting moved, we'll be looking at a different Slavkovsky potentially. So I do think that right now is the best opportunity for him. Uh, we'll see what they they do, the decisions that they make. But I believe that Laval right now is probably his best uh, his best bet if he's going to continue playing on the fourth line and not be given opportunities. Yeah, you know, he's playing with Jake Evans and Michael Pizzetta. You can't really expect much from a guy like Uri Slavkowski yeah. in terms of his offensive production, playing four line minutes. If he stays in the NHL, it's projected that in 77 games, he's going to finish with 23 points, nine goals, and 14 assists. And... He'll be a minus 14. 
that is not good for your first overall uh, pick, especially in his rookie season. Um, you know, you, he's, you're going to have to do better than that. You know, they didn't send Stavkowski to the World Juniors, um, you know, which was a huge, huge, huge missed o- opportunity for uh, Slovakia and for Slavkowski in terms of his development. He would have really benefited from that like Shane Wright did. Um, not only that, but, you know, Stavkowski, you know, not being able to be put in a position to succeed. Because as of right now, the Canadians are trying to showcase people like Christian Dvorak, Gallagher, Hoffman. Um, well, Armia. Well, you got yeah, questions today. Armia, but... Anderson, because of trade value. They want to increase their trade value to be traded at the deadline because this, at the end of the day, is a rebuilding team. And yeah. they have a chance at drafting a guy like Leo Carlson or Connor Bedard or Adam Fantilli. This is a stacked draft. And they already have Florida's pick and they have their own pick, which are possibly going to fall in the top 10 to 10, top 15. So, you know... This is a very important draft year for Montreal. So Stavkowski is the victim of a real rebuilding team. And how you know Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon want to go about in terms of trying to increase other players' values. So if that's the case, don't make Stavkowski suffer this season. Send him to Laval to a winning environment. Help them there, you know, with all the injuries that you know Luca was alluding to before. Get top line minutes. Gain your confidence. Come back next season where the team is even younger and have a lot more of those players traded away that they're showcasing now. So then Stavkowski is going to be put in a position where he could succeed and, and play power play minutes or penalty kill minutes. And I want to I wanna reiterate something. So, you know, this to me, when I look at Uri Stavkowski, it reminds me a lot of what happened with Kakademi and Galchenyuk a little bit. I know it's still early, but... Um, with Kak and Yemi, the biggest mistake Montreal made is that they drafted him and they didn't send him back to, to Finland uh, to play one more season or send him to Laval right away. They brought him into the NHL team, didn't use him properly, and now look where he's at. Right? Alex Galchenyuk was pretty much the same thing. Galchenyuk wasn't put in a position to succeed right away. And when he was, he did really well. Um, and he had probably his best seasons in Montreal when, was, when he was put into a, uh, to a position to succeed. Obviously, after his injury, he wasn't the same player, but uh, still... I think, and also an example is Cole Caulfield. You know, Cole Caulfield last year under Dominic Ducharme uh, was was put on the fourth line, didn't play much, didn't get opportunities to play on the top line, uh, had one goal in 30 games. Marty St. Louis came in, uh, stuck him with Suzuki, scored 22 goals, uh, 23 goals. You know, that's that's not, that's not, that has nothing to do with, with, uh, the player that has to do with the fact that yes, the player did well under the circumstances that he was in and he was put in a position to succeed, but that's good coaching. And I don't think that Marty St. Louis has done that with Slavkowski this season. I'm not saying St. Louis is a bad coach. I'm just saying that I think he should put Slavkowski, you know, like we've seen examples of Joel Armia play with Suzuki and Caulfield. We've seen Kirby Doc play with Suzuki and Caulfield. We've seen Anderson. We've seen Gallagher. Why don't you put Slavkowski there? You know, I'm not. I'm not saying he has to play 25 minutes a night. Nobody's saying that. But, you know, come in, make him play 15 minutes a night, see what he could do with Caulfield and Suzuki, and put him on, you know, put him on the power play. First unit as well. We have five forwards on the power play. Why isn't he there? Because we have Mike Hoffman, like, I or or Jonathan Drouet, for example. Like, I don't want to... I don't want to take that away, but I understand that we're trying to rebuild and we're not trying to win. But even at that, don't you want the guy who's first overall, um, you know, and you drafted him first overall in your future to be playing on the top unit with the best players on the team to potentially develop? Like, that's yeah. how I see it, right? I could be wrong. But that's how I see it. He's, so. he's done a lot of small things right, but like, you know, for example, the way that he endures a hit and he has his yeah. head down, you know, a lot of people were you know, saying like, you know, buddy, keep your head up, you know, put yourself in a position where you're not going to get hit like that. And he falls to the ground and then people think he has a concussion and he's rushed to the locker room. And then he comes back and yeah, he's all okay. Yeah, he needs to improve on for sure. Like, Nobody's taking that away. A lot of things he needs to improve on. So is he NHL ready? I would say yes, but due to the fact that Montreal are in a unique position where they're showcasing players that need to be traded by the deadline or by the off the off season. And they're not really doing much of Slavkowski. This is not really benefiting him. And yes, he deserves to be sent down to Laval and properly develop and get the special units and gain the confidence and get the proper development that he deserves and needs, especially when you're a first overall pick. We don't want to look back at this and be like, oh, well, there you go. Another Alexi Lafreniere. Look what's going on with the New York Rangers. We covered that video. You guys could check that out. You know, we don't want that to happen with Slavkowski in Montreal. That would be 
a huge, huge shame. And then people were going to think that Shane Wright was the right pick to go with at first overall. If, you know, things continue, you know, to go how, you know, Shane Wright is doing right now. Because look, ever since he got sent down, you know, he's been doing great with the Spitfires well, in, uh, in the I, AHL. I he's give... doing good with Canada. And when he got called back up, he scored against Montreal. He got his first yeah. NHL goal. So his confidence is, you know, being it's being well, increased. And I want to give I want to give an example to two guys that you know have done really well, um, and I've actually sh- done you know I've had pretty decent development in Simon Nemec and David Juracek. I know they're defensemen, but you know both of them started off in the AHL. Juracek played a couple of games in the NHL as well. Uh, he's one of the best defensemen in the AHL. Not, Nemec has had a slow progression in the AHL, but he's still done decently well. Uh, both of them went to the World Juniors, have been big impacts for their teams as well. This is what developing is all about. And I think Montreal made a huge mistake, not A, putting him in the AHL, I think, to begin with, and B, not sending him to the World Juniors. Because not only that, but this guy's 18 at the end of the day. And like, there's still time. There's still time. He's not ruined, guys. He's not. No, no, he's not ruined. I don't think he's the right right to ship before it's too late. That's it. And it's not just that. Like, listen, because he's 18 years old, I think that if you're going to play him in the NHL, you should give him an opportunity to play with the top guys. If he's not going to play in the NHL, put him in the AHL and let him grow his game and let him become better. Because at the end of the day, the AHL is a development league. That's what it's supposed to be, right? For a lot of young guys, that's what they're there to develop. And then they become really good players in the NHL. You know, a lot of guys went through the AHL uh, AHL route before becoming NHLers. So it happens and, and it's it's not a bad thing that it happens. And I know that because he was the first overall pick, you know, people are like, oh, don't send down your first overall pick. But at the end of the day, if that's what's best for his development, that's what's best for his development. Like it shouldn't be yeah. whether he was drafted first or seventh. Like it doesn't really change much. At the end of the day, if, if that's what's going to help him and become better, and especially since the Habs suck, like, you know, <laughs> It doesn't really, it's, but let's be honest. And, Habs and sucks, look, so. He's going to get development. The Habs are going to get another, like, what, top five pick, top 10 pick. And, you know, Slavkowski is going to come back next year and he's going to be in a better environment in terms of, you know, yep. having more <laughs> ice time and playing with younger players that all are going to try to crack a spot. And look, we've seen how Gooley is. We've seen how Jack Guy is and Harris, you know, they came up. They were given a position to succeed because Montreal's defense was very thin. Right, but Sapkowski, unfortunately, it's a numbers game that we're alluding to, and there's too many forwards on this team. And until players are traded, Sapkowski's not gonna get those top minutes and proper development. Guys, yeah. we'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. A bunch of Canadian fans, what are your thoughts on Sapkowski so far? What should they do with Sapkowski? Are they ruining him? Is it too early to say? We'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe to our channel. Like this video, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Young Guns Podcast.